This is the homework helper for chapter 3, section 11 in the 7th grade workbook where we're solving equations with fractions. We're going to go ahead and focus on the middle of the slide there. We're going to work through questions uh, 7 through 12 which give us some good practice with multiplication and division questions and then we'll also go ahead and take a look at 19. So let's start with number 7, 1 fourth s equals 3 fourths. So again, as you saw in the note presentation there, all right, this is multiplication and division, so no common denominator required here. We're going to say to ourselves, variables on the left, so s being on the left is a good thing, and numbers on the right, so 3 fourths being on the right is a good thing. A fourth being on the left, that's a bad thing because numbers belong on the right. So we're going to have to move him to the opposite side, and remember, to do that, we do the opposite. Well, right now, this says I'm multiplying by 1 fourth. Well, the opposite of that is going to be, of course, to divide. But remember, I'm dividing by a fraction, which is something we've never, never done. We don't divide by fractions. We multiply by the reciprocal. So to solve this, I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 over 1. The 4s are going to cancel on the one diagonal. And this, on this other diagonal, 3 and 1, that's just going to stay there. So S is going to be 3 over 1 or just 3 if you want to write it that way. All right, let's try that again in number 8. 1 fifth A equals 1 half. All right, so again, we want to keep that variable on the left. So the fact that A is on the left side, that's a good thing. And numbers on the right, so the fact that a half is on the right side, that's also a good thing. So continuing on the solving steps here then, we're going to have to go ahead and look at moving a fifth out of the way because that's a number and it's on the left, but it's supposed to be on the right. So as far as moving one fifth goes, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal to solve here again because dividing here by a fraction is something we've never done. We don't do that, we multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 over 1 to solve here. On the left, just like you saw in 7, that's just going to leave me my variable a, which is always how this works. On the right side, there's nothing even to reduce here. We can just multiply. 1 and 5 is 5. 2 and 1 is 2. So a is 5 over 2. All right, number 9. 4 fifths h equals 8 ninths. All right, so again, keep the variable on the left. So the variable h being on the left side, that's a good thing. 8 ninths being on the right side, that's a good thing as well. 4 fifths, 4 fifths is the problem. 4 fifths is what's going to have to move here. All right, so again, right now to solve, I would divide by 4 fifths. Because as this problem sits, it's a multiplication question. But we've never done that. Again, for the third time in this section here, all right, we've never done that. We never divide by a fraction. We always multiply by the reciprocal, which is the same thing as dividing. So to solve this one, I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 over 4. On the left side, that's just going to leave me h, which is fine. On the right side, 8 times 5 is 40, and 9 and 4 is 36, so that's 40, 36 if you want to reduce first, and I do. On the diagonal with 8 and 4, I'm going to chop a 4 out of each of those guys, which is going to change those into 2 and 1, and then when we remultiply, we see this simplifies down to 10 over 9, which is exactly what 40 over 36 would reduce to. All right, the next row of questions here switches up to uh, all subtraction. But of course, when we talk about subtracting fractions, we have to talk about common denominators then. That's kind of the reason I'm avoiding that top row, because 1 and 2 already have the common denominators. So that should actually be a little bit easier than what we're going to do here in 10, 11, and 12. Taking a look at 10, we've got p minus 2 thirds equals 5 eighths. Well, the variable p being on the left side, that's a good thing. And 5 eighths, the number being on the right side, that's also a good thing. What's not good here is 2 thirds. 2 thirds is going to have to move. Well, right now it says I'm subtracting 2 thirds. 
If I want to move something to the opposite side, I have to do the opposite. So of course to solve here, I'm going to add 2 thirds to both sides. So on the left side, the minus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds cancels each other out. That's just going to leave me my variable p, which is no problem there. 5 eighths and 2 thirds, that's where we're going to have to think. We're going to have to think about the process of common denominator there. What do we know? Well, the common denominator there is going to be 24. Remember, you're going to do least common multiple of the denominators. The 8 list would go 8, 16, 24. The 3 list would go 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. The match is at 24. The common denominator is 24. Change the bottom numbers of my fractions into 24s. Okay, so to change 5 eighths into something over 24, we'd be multiplying by 3. Because to multiply 8, the denominator by 3 is how I get 24. Do the same to the top, so that's 15 24s. 2 thirds, we're multiplying by 8, because to change 3 into 24 means multiplying by 8. Do the same thing to the top, that's 16 24s. So we're really putting together 15 24ths and 16 24ths, and that's going to give me 31 24ths. And since nothing is coming out of 31, we know we can't reduce that any further, and that's a solid answer. Take a look at 11. D minus 3 fifths equals 7 tenths. Will probably be a little bit easier. Um, we're going to go through the process here. Keep that variable D on the left. That's a good thing. Number 7 tenths on the right. That's also a good thing. 3 fifths on the other hand, not a good thing. So we're going to have to get 3 fifths out of the way here. Since the question says minus 3 fifths, and we're going to talk about opposite side, do the opposite, because again, that number is going to move to the opposite side, I'm going to add 3 fifths to both sides here. On the left side, they're going to cancel each other out and just leave me my variable D. On the right side, I've got 7 tenths plus 3 fifths going together here. Well, common denominator here of 10 and 5, that's probably a pretty easy one for most of us to figure out, is 10. 10 list starts at 10, the 5 list goes 5, 10. So all we're doing is doubling that second fraction to make that bottom number go to a 10. So that's going to be 6 tenths. So this is 7 tenths plus 6 tenths. And that's going to go together to make 13 tenths. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 12. Y minus 2 sevenths equals 3 and a fourth. Now, this is the first time in this homework set that we've been thrown in mixed number here. 3 and 1 fourth is not going to work for us. That's probably going to make things more complicated. You might be able to work with it, but it might be easier to just change it. So let's go ahead and just change that right away. We know that's going to be the same thing as 13 fourths. So this is Y minus 2 sevenths equals 13 fourths. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13, and the denominator would stay the same. So in case you forgot, that's how I get 13 fourths there. All right, so now I'll go through the steps. Keep the variable y on the left, that's a good thing. Keep 13 fourths on the right, that's also a good thing. 2 sevenths is a number that's on the left, that's a bad thing because numbers belong on the right. So we're going to have to move 2 sevenths out of the way there. How am I going to move 2 sevenths? Well, since it's got subtraction in front of it, I'm going to have to add. Because remember, to move something to the opposite side, I'm going to go ahead and do the opposite there. So I'm going to add 2 sevenths to both sides. So at this point now, we'd have to do the common denominator setup that we've been doing in the last couple questions here. 13 fourths and 2 sevenths are going to go together somehow. Common denominator with 4 and 7 is going to be 28. 4 list goes 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. 7 list goes 7, 14, 21, 28. Again, all I'm doing there is the least common multiple of the denominators, which is in the bottom number. So these are both going to change into 28s. Well, to change 4 into 28, I'm multiplying by 7. So I'm going to multiply this top number by 7 as well. 7 times 13 is 91. To change 7 into 28, we're multiplying by 4. 
So I'm going to multiply this top by 4 here as well. 4 times 2 is 8. So it's 91 28 plus 28 uh, plus 8 28. That's going to go together to make 99 28 for variable y. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the one story problem there at the very bottom. It says Sarah Beth ran one and two fifths miles on a path around the park. This was 5 eighths of the distance around the park. What is the distance around the park? So this is very similar to a question you saw in your notes, except the question in the notes was about the weight of copper. All right, it says this was 5 eighths of the distance around the park. And you remember from that question, I emphasized of then as well, because that means multiply. The distance around the park, that's what we don't know. So that's going to be our variable, because again, a variable always represents something we don't know. So if we translate that out a little bit, it's 5 a's. All of it's going to go to times. Distance around the park is our variable. Pick a variable, 5 a's times x. Now, we'll go back to the first line to figure out the rest of it. it says she ran 1 and 2 fifths miles. So that's going to be the same as 1 and 2 fifths miles. Well, that's where our equation comes up because the equation is going to say those two things are the same, and that's what they're telling us in this question, that that distance she ran is the same as 5 eighths of the distance around the park. So we're going to set that equal to 1 and 2 fifths, but I'm actually going to tweak that just a little bit and write that instead as its improper fraction, 7 fifths. Not a big change, but still a change. Okay, so... 5 eighths x equals 7 fifths. So this is just like that set of questions we did there in black and 7, 8, 9. All right, I don't want the 5 eighths on that side because numbers belong on the right. So I've got to move that 5 eighths. Well, remember, this is a fraction question. So to say I'm going to divide isn't going to work because we don't divide by fractions. When we want to divide by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. So to solve this question, I'm going to have to multiply both sides by 8 over 5 to make this work. And as you can see, I'm using those giant parentheses again to show multiplication. And then we're going to multiply. The numerator 7 and 8 is 56. Denominator is 5 and 5 is 25. So the distance around the park is 56 25ths of a mile. If you want to change that into something a little more tangible, you can change that into 2 and 6 25ths or 2 and 6 25ths of a mile. That might make more sense to you, but there's nothing wrong with 56 25ths as an answer. That is a valid response.